A feel amazing day everyone! It's good to have you again. Welcome to another day of feel amazing discoveries and learning. But why don't we start by having a short recap of the previous lesson. In the previous Feel Amazing episode, we we'll learned about reflection, a process that aids us in understanding what is going on around us using the holistic point of view. We also learned about the many possible ways of understanding the dynamics of philosophical reflections. What are these ways? We could use the principles, theories, and findings presented by science, the more Cillian, way as presented by the philosopher Gabriel Marcel, Plato's masterpiece, The Allegory of the Cave, and, of course, the moral theology. I hope that you remembered all of that from our previous session and that you are now ready for more full amazing adventures. I have been browsing the internet for a while and I am not sure if all these news articles are factual because there is a lot of fake news out there. Oh, I think I must share this one. Are you sure you would want to share that? How sure are you that it isn't fake news? Well, think before you click. She's right. Since philosophy is the search for truth, we must keep in mind that when we see things on the internet, it is a must for us to always fact-check every piece of information that we get, which leads to the following questions. How do we validate the information we get from the world around us? How do we distinguish opinion from truth? I can bring you to a place where we can all discover the nature and theories of truth. Oh, it's you! Well, that would be great. What are you waiting for? Get yourselves ready for another Phil Amazing Discovery. I am Teacher Joshua, your Phil Amazing Teacher Broadcaster. I'm Teacher Josa, your Goddess Maestra. And this is the fourth episode of the Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. Welcome to the Doors of Truth. A place where we can all discover the nature and theories of truth. Come on, let's get inside. Wow, it feels good to be here. According to philosophy, if you want to know the truth, you have to use not emotions, but thinking. To think, however, is an act of choice that is not always done properly. Therefore, we need guidance to straighten out our thoughts. This is the room of epistemology. Epistemology comes from the Greek term episteme, which means knowledge, and logos, which means study of. Therefore, epistemology is the study of knowledge. According to the Russian-American philosopher Ayn Rand, Epistemology is a science devoted to the discovery of the proper method of acquiring and validating knowledge. The purpose of epistemology, therefore, is twofold. First, to show how we can acquire knowledge, and second, to validate if the knowledge we acquired is really knowledge. How do we make sure that it is true? Since knowledge plays a central role in epistemology, let us briefly describe its nature. According to Merriam-Webster, knowledge is the fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience. When you know something, you understand its nature. You identify what it is and it stays with you. Knowledge then is a retained form of awareness. Knowledge is a mental state. That is, knowledge exists in one's mind, therefore, unthinking things cannot know anything. Knowledge is a kind of belief. If one has no beliefs about a particular matter, one cannot have knowledge about it. Precisely. Hence, knowledge requires belief. Of course, not all beliefs constitute knowledge. 
Belief is necessary, but it's not sufficient for knowledge. We are all sometimes mistaken in what we believe. In other words, while some of our beliefs are true, others are false. As we try to acquire knowledge, what we are doing is increasing our stock of true beliefs. Yes, it is good to know that belief by itself is not sufficient for knowledge. This will avoid us from becoming a victim of fake news which is all around us. But how do we acquire knowledge in the first place? We will learn about that as we enter the next door. Welcome to the room of knowledge acquisition. To know is to know something. And this something is what philosophers call reality, existence, and being. Existence is everything there is. It includes everything we perceive and everything inside our heads. Existence is really all there is to know. If one has no knowledge about it, Knowledge is impossible. Our first and only contact with reality is through our senses. Knowledge begins with perception. At first, the senses give us knowledge of things or entities. Later, we become aware not only of things, but certain aspects of things like qualities, quantities, relationships, and even actions. And these characteristics cannot be taken away from its entities. Red, for example, cannot be separated from objects like apples and strawberries, as walking cannot be separated from person that walks and the like. After we perceive things, we begin to notice that some things are similar to others. For example, we see three individuals. Let's name them Juan, Pablo, and Pedro. They might not have something in common at first glance, but when we compare them to other entities, say a dog, we can say that they are different because they can speak and they do not bark. And that difference highlights their similarities. We therefore group them into one class, which we call humans. Grouping them into a class we call humans is an example of concept. And what is a concept? According to the dictionary, a concept is an abstract or generic idea generalized from particular instances. Next, we use abstraction to narrow or widen our concepts. Feel amazing! Then after, we assert or deny these concepts by coming up with a proposition. Yes, so from our concept earlier, we can now affirm that humans can speak and deny the human spark. So, how do we demonstrate these statements are true? We now provide an argument. An argument is a group of statements, one or more of which are claimed to provide support for or reason to believe one or the other. To clarify this definition, Let's use the same example that we had earlier. We say that one, Pablo and Pedro can speak. Humans can speak. Therefore, one, Pablo and Pedro are humans. These arguments express a reasoning process, and that's what we call inference. Aside from arguments, did you know that there are other forms of inference that will help you know if the knowledge that you acquired is really knowledge? Let me guess. Are we going to learn that in the next door? Absolutely! Let's, Let's go. go! Welcome to the room of knowledge validation. Now, we already know what we know and how we got to know it. The next thing to do is validate whether what we know is true or not. First, ask yourself, how did I come up with this belief? By what steps? You now have to retrace the steps that you took to acquire that knowledge. Do you still remember what we did earlier in the previous room? Let's see! 
first, we know that something exists, and that's reality. Then, we use our senses, and that gives our perception. After that, we learn more things about it, and it now becomes a concept in our mind. Then, we affirm or deny the concept that we have, which is what we call proposition. Lastly, we provide or give support and reasons to believe in what we propose, and that process of reasoning is called inference. What a very sharp memory, Teacher Joshua! Now, to validate whether what we know is true or not, we will use the very same steps that we use in acquiring knowledge. But this time, we will do the steps in reverse order in a process that we call reduction. This is a good time to recall what the ancient philosopher Heraclitus said. Knowledge acquisition is the way up, while knowledge validation is the way down. If we perform the process of reduction, we will realize that all true knowledge rests ultimately on sense perception. Let's have an example. Let's use these three statements. I am alive. I have a body. I can breathe. You can only validate these statements if you observe yourself using your senses. Feel your body. Are you breathing? Feel your pulse. Is your heart beating? Observe your body. Is it moving? These and the countless examples provided by your senses prove that you are alive. Great! However, not all statements can be validated directly by the senses. Some ideas need proof. Validation is a multi-step process that ultimately rests on sense perception. Another way to determine if a statement is true is by a consensus. Mostly, if the majority agrees that the statement is true, then it is true. But there are certain limitations to this approach. Because something does not become true just because a majority of people believe it. That is right. Far too many times in history, false ideas became popular and these phenomenon have led to disaster. For example, the vast majority of Germans during the time of Adolf Hitler believed that Jews were racially inferior. The Nazis supported this false belief by using pseudobiological science. This was obviously false and the result of the false consensus was the extermination of millions of Jews in the many parts of Europe. And that is the reason we are saying that consensus has certain limitations. Yes, consensus may be helpful, but it is not always reliable. Well, we still have another option to test whether a statement is true. And it is by means of action. For example, you want to know if a person is friendly? What would you do? Well, the best way to find out is to approach the person. That's the action I would take to find out if a person is friendly or not. Feel amazing! Now you have learned already how to validate your knowledge. To add more insights, let us determine how to distinguish truth from opinion. This door leads to the Truth and Opinion Theater. Theater? Are we going to watch a movie? It's for you to find out. Identifying truth can sometimes be tricky. The reason is that there are times when we have an idea that we feel strongly about and we know deep down to be true. Sometimes, this leads us to generalize that others believe it the same way that we do. This is where opinion comes in. But before we delve deeper into that, I want you to prepare your pen and paper. I would like you to watch the following news brought to us by PTB4. Then, list down the statements that you will hear and group them as to whether they are truth 
or opinion. Roll VTR! Pinuksan na ang mga bagong mapapasyalan sa Shilang Latridad Benguet gaya ng mga nature park at flower garden. Unang mararating ang Garden ng Ines kung saan matatagpuan ang Antorium Terraces. Madadatnan dito ang 25 uri ng Antorium Flowers. Maaari ding pagdarausan ng iba't ibang okasyon ang garden. At tayo di nag-pandemic, makanang tinumatang tinisabong. And so, iaramit ka lang sa Eco Park. O imbis nga harvest on me, hanan, viewing na lang. Makukulay na bulaklak naman ang makikita sa kalapit na Dargen's Garden. Inaasahang magiging atraksyon ang sunflower at poinsettia maze na inaasahang mamumulaklak sa Nobyembre. Maaari ding ma-enjoy ang horseback riding para makapaglibot sa iba pang bahagi ng bundok. Ang grupo ng mga kabataang ito, naging hobby na ang horseback riding. Nakakatanggal din ng stress kasi ngayong pandemic, eh, nakakulong lang tayo sa bahay, wala tayong ginagawa kaya... Isang, isang hobby ang pangangabayo dahil pwede kang pumasyal, wala ka rin babayaran o gagastusin. Pinaplano pa ang iba pang aktibidad na maaaring ma-enjoy ng mga turista sa kanilang lugar tulad ng eco-trail hiking at mountain biking. O oh, ito po, isa pang magandang balita. Nasungkit ng Cebu at Visayas ang titulo bilang Best Island in Asia Batay po yan sa isang international travel magazine. Sa resulta ng Conde Nast Travelers o CNT 2020 Reader's Choice Awards, pasok din sa listahan ng Palawan City na nakuha ang ikaapat na pwesto at Siargao Island na nasa ikalimang pwesto. Pasok din sa top 10 ang Boracay Island na nakuha naman ikaanim na pwesto. Batay sa CNT, taon-taong nasa milyong-milyong dayuhan ang bumibisita sa Cebu dahil sa mga malilinis itong mga beach, at naggagandahang diving destinations. Dinarayo rin doon ang Basilica Minore del Santo Nino at ang malit na imahen ng Batang Jesus na ipinresenta ni Ferdinand Magellan. Did you jot down some statements? Now, I will help you assess your answers through some characteristics of truth and opinion. How? By taking note of these acronyms. CIB or SIB, and COBI or COBI. The first one is CIB. If the statement can be confirmed with other sources and is made independent of one's interpretation and preferences based on facts or reality, then the statement is a truth. On the other hand, we have COBI. If the statement cannot be confirmed, and is open to interpretation based on emotions and inherently biased, then the statement is an opinion. Did you group your statements correctly? Feel amazing! Now, let us proceed to the last door of truth. I guess you may still have questions. Now, let's understand truth with these theories. First, we have the correspondence theory of truth. The next one, we have the coherence theory of truth. And the last one is the pragmatist theory of truth. Now, let us tackle them one by one as we get into the last door. Let's go. The basic idea of the correspondence theory is that what we believe or say is true if it corresponds to the way things actually are based on facts. It argues with the idea that corresponds with reality is true, while the idea which does not correspond with reality is false. Let's have some examples. For example, if I say the sky is blue, then I look outside and see that it is indeed blue, then my statement is true. On the other hand, if I say pig has wings, then when I look at the pig and it does not have wings, then my statement is false. In general, statements of beliefs, propositions, and ideas are capable of being true or false. Next, we have the coherence theory. And with that, we are going with a statement given by Austin Klein. He is a writer and a great contributor of articles about secular humanism and agnosticism. 
fork line, one might conclude that the statement is true only when the statement is tested as a part of a larger system of complex ideas. Consequently, by using this method, one can ascertain if the statement is true or false based on whether the statement coheres with the larger system or not. For example, if you pick up a ball and drop it accidentally, the action cannot be simply explained by our belief in the law of gravity, which can be verified but also be a host of other factors that may have something to do with the incident, such as the accuracy of our visual perception. Lastly, there is the pragmatic theory of truth which states that a belief or statement is true if it has useful application in the world. If it does not, then it is not true. In addition, we can know whether a belief or statement is true by examining the consequence of holding or accepting the statement or belief to be true. For example, there are some people who think that there is a ghost or vampires because they find it useful in explaining unusual phenomena and in dealing with fears. So, if we are going to use the word truth, then we'll also define it as that which is the most useful to us. All of these theories represent the ideas of rationalist philosophers such as Baruch Spinoza, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, and the British philosopher Bradley. And they are useful in our quest to further understand what truth is. And that's it! I believe this marks the end of today's film amazing discovery. These plays taught and made us realize a lot of things. First, we learn about epistemology and the nature of knowledge. Second, we learn how to acquire and validate knowledge. Then, we learn how to distinguish truth from opinion. And lastly, we were introduced to different theories of truth. For our next Phil Amazing episode, we will continue discovering more about the world of philosophy with Teacher Jossa. I am so excited and I can't wait to be with you next week. I am Teacher Joshua. And I am Teacher Josa. We hope that you will be with me on our next Phil Amazing Discoveries, Learning and Adventures.